Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net. This is Carol Parisi, and today we are speaking to Kim Hilgeman from uh, the Great Awakening Group, Awaken America. And um, Kim, what got you involved in this movement? Well, it was the, the election that brought us a new, uh, a new government, I want to say. Um, we, we are just living out um, an America I don't recognize anymore. I, I, I am a, I'm now a grandmother of two babies. So I look at my grandchildren and I'm like, what is going to be left for these children? Even for, in our own needs now are being affected by Congress, the, the administration that's in, in power now. We are... We are in a different place. Our freedoms are being taken away. And as a mom, as a, as a full-time worker, as a grandma now, I need to make, try and make a difference. I can't just sit back and let them take our country and do what they want. So I am very much um, on board with making it very difficult for them, if at all possible. And what, what specifically, and I, I, I know this, what specifically did you do? I well, know that you walked precincts. We, we would go door to door. We would talk to the people. And we had doors slammed in our faces. We did not always, we were not mm -hmm. always welcome on doorsteps. Mm -hmm. But some, most people, and I have to say most people were disgusted with, uh, as far as with the Joe Walsh campaign. Uh, Melissa Bean was, was not doing the job she was paid to do. And people were disgusted by that. So they were looking for something. She was there three terms. And, yes. and what did she, you With know, a lot she of was money. not help. Yes. And she beat three wealthy contenders Absol along the way. Absolutely. And yeah. with Joe Walsh having a minimal, you know, amount of money to work with, but he had people power. And he you had. Know, you know, I, I'm going to interrupt you there. Uh, a voter uh, that I was talking to about Walsh said, uh, how can I support this guy? Uh, he lost his job. He's, he's personally broke. Uh, he's lost his home. That's gone. And he's being sued by his campaign manager. Is that true? I says, yeah, I think he's a perfect American he's, candidate. For Absolutely. This time, he was yes. And he did go on so to So many win. are going yes. through. So <laughs> he understands. Now, Kim, I, I know you were at the very first uh, meeting and there was no name for this organization. Tell us a little bit about that. And I remember specifically, tell us a well, little bit. Well, and it was, we didn't realize till much later that that was on Constitution Day that that was started, our first meeting. We didn't know that. Until the three of the members that came in said today's Constitution Day. Right. So it wasn't an intent to do it on Constitution, but this was divine birth, intervention, divine, I yeah, divine <laughs> inspiration, or whatever. But well, um, some people would call it grassroots action. Uh, you know, it, 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 as a man, I'm a little disappointed in a lot of my fellow guys. Uh, it's like um, some of those that are running. I don't mean to ding them all, but uh, what's lacking in most of them is uh, really a gut, spirit, drive, uh, some heat in mm -hmm. the thing. Uh, everybody would like to see the candidates like Governor Christie. Mm -hmm. uh, that really, you, you know where he stood. Mm -hmm. He stood where you wanted him to be. Strong. And uh, you women uh, showed such energy and uh, fighting spirit. Uh, you make one of, some of my fellow men look uh, <laughs> kind of like wimps uh, compared to what you did out there. Well, I'll tell you, there we were a lot of women in our in our organization walking, and it was funny because not that there weren't some guys. Oh, no, sure, there's plenty. Some, not, you know many. what? No, like no, no. Uh, like Weber up there, Tom Weber. Yeah, Tom Weber. Weber's awesome. Uh, we worked we worked synergistically with Tom. We're members he of each other's He has and drive. He yes, does he does. Good, yeah. Passion and purpose. Good leader. Strong and Bob leader driving skills. us around and yes. lost a, us a couple times <laughs> in the neighborhoods. He, <laughs> he dropped me off in one neighborhood and Carol, and then he, he forgot where he left me, and oh. I oh just kept Thank going. Thank God for cell phones. <laughs> and modern yeah. technology. But um, Kim, some of the other things that I know that, that Awaken America did you, we did, you did trainings. Could you tell us a little bit about trainings and maybe even... Got us to, uh, we, we registered to be a registrar. Okay, what does that to get, mean? To get people to vote. We can actually sign up voters now. I'm like, you know, that's a privilege to be able to, well, you know, I didn't get to vote. Well, here, I've got an application right here. So, um, Don't you think it would be great to uh, get people to sign up because they realize they want to be real Americans? And make a difference. You, make yes, a difference. that would be. You know, this mess wasn't done by the people. It was been done by the damn fools that... Uh, 
pardon me, but that are running particularly our schools and about everything mm -hmm. right. you want to do. The regulations are awful. And they don't want us voting because they don't want us to figure out what they're doing. They want, you know, they, they don't want informed voters. They and don't. that's what we no, need uh, to be. Obama is a very epitome of that. Uh, I mean, we've got a state problem of our own, but uh, we spawned that guy. Uh, out of here, and uh, uh, yes. and he went after the young, and the young be college back students here. that knew nothing. But, but he about had a great message. Here's the deal. He had Hope a great message, change. but it change, wasn't but honest. But not for the good no, it, for it, us. It wasn't. He it. wanted to change us, but oh, not he, for the good. Oh, it was honest. He did want to change. Yes. He, but uh, for his ideology, for, his for bigger government, mm -hmm. for a larger, more bureaucracy. We got taken in by a political con man. What yes. you're talking about is people thought that was what he's talking about. The last thing he was talking he about them. was Americanism, yes. where people are free and responsible. Mm -hmm. He's telling you, I'm going to change it so I'll take care of you. Right. Yes. I'll make your decisions. Who needs that? No, he's clearly... Mm -hmm. not a constitutional no. kind of guy. He's a big government guy. He's a big Isn't government Isn't it a guy. joke? Bureaucracy. I'm from the federal government, and, and I'm here, here to help you. <laughs> Who believes that? Yeah, <laughs> right there. They should have I do the out. postman, yeah. but uh, he's a good guy, but not the rest. What, is, what did Ronald Reagan say? That the government is not the solution to the problem. The <laughs> government is, the, is problem. the problem. And Ronald Reagan loved America. He believed in American exceptionalism. Well, he yeah. exemplified Amplified leadership and passion. I didn't know purpose. you were old enough to. Uh, that, uh, yes, I am. That was in no, fact. No I Reagan. registered to vote in 1978. I'm going to give my age away here, and I was privileged for the very first presidential <laughs> presidential election to have voted for Ronald Reagan. And I truly believed the Republican Party. That's the way it was going to be, because the 80s were phenomenal. I, I started my first business in the 80s. There was prosperity. We were positive. We we had that American dream, and it was amazing. Absolutely. And I don't see it now. I don't feel that passion with this administration. And for the Spanish people, that uh, I think I know how to say it, it's sueños americano. <laughs> sueños <laughs> americano, huh? Yeah, yeah, sueños americano. Yeah, it's the American dream. Mm -hmm. you, you look at the Spanish people in this uh, country that come here, uh, and I, I think you, uh, Spanish isn't right. It's Hispanic. Hispanic. Uh, but uh, they've come to this country to, uh, because the, the beautiful the place of Mexico uh, with all of the gold and silver and oil, fish in the world around it, yep. a wonderful climate. It's a, it's a rich place to be, but it's being run by people that don't care about they don't. Mm -hmm. They have never not accessible given to free, them. Yeah, they've never enlivened mm -hmm. with freedom uh, the people in their country. So without even knowing about it, they've come where the American dream is. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, the Democrats have swept them in and said, "We will take care of you." And they're taking our tax money right. to pretend uh, to help the. Uh, people that have immigrated to this country. And you can't blame them for wanting to come to a better country, but come legally, come the right well. way. And, the, and the, the red tape and all I can understand, but, or why can't they, why can't they empower their government to make their country better? So that Hopefully they're... so, but we can uh, do a better example here. Uh, the immigrants to this country, uh, they want to work. Mm -hmm. and, and they that's are a, hard work. They are hard, very hard workers. Here in, I'm a here child in, of an immigrant. Here in My Carpentersville, people talk about illegal immigrants because a lot of Hispanic people have come here. I'll tell you a different strange fact you wouldn't expect. Uh, since we have a greater proportion of Hispanic people in Carpentersville, the crime rate has gone down, not mm -hmm. up. Hmm. I mean, those people are family people, they nice. they're very Hard religious, mm -hmm. and they Hard ought to get away from the Democratic Party mm -hmm. that's telling them, vote for us, for, we're being generous to you. Uh, that generosity is sickening, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's ruining their lives and that of the whole country. Well, you know, I think this this country clearly is made of immigrants. You, your mother w was from Ireland, am I correct? My grandmother came over, an orphan girl of 14, uh -huh. from uh, Belfast. She did she came here to be taken care of, or did she came here come here to make her own Nobody way? was, uh, listen, Grandma Boyle was on one of the streetcars at one time, and the gentleman next to him, by accident or otherwise, put his hand on her knee, and she whacked him with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what makes America so exceptional, though, is all yeah, the different cultures, but coming here to be American. And I, yeah. that is, that my is grandma, the gift. My grandma uh, married twice uh, uh, because uh, 
two of her, the railroads were dangerous in those days, and her husband uh, uh, individually, uh, they were brakemen on the railroad. Those, you know, that was before Westinghouse, and you had to put the brakes on right between each car. Oh. So she lost two husbands. Wow. She brought up three daughters, one of them my mother, and she brought them up without welfare. That's right. Well, when we come back from the break, we're going to put the brakes on here now, but when we come back from the, <laughs> the, the break, we're going to be speaking more about the awakening of America.